How about a combination video? Kitchen table electronics repair and computers. Sounds like a winner to me. What we have here is a Samsung flat panel and an A-open computer based on an A-open motherboard and maybe a case too given that that logo is down there. Anyway, they both have the same problem. The computer works, the monitor doesn't. The monitor was given to me by a co-worker several years ago. They said that when plugged in it does not turn on and makes a hissing noise, which is almost a certain sign that something inside it is loading down the monitor's built-in power supply. And I would imagine it's probably bad capacitors. So let's start with it first and get it open and see what we see. Well, this was definitely kind of a pain to take apart and it t comes apart in a slightly less than obvious way. The most of these that I've been into over time have actually had this metal material with the circuit boards in it lift off and leave the circuit boards with the main display chassis, but this one is different. The boards actually come off with the back thing, which is sharp, so if you do this on your own Samsung, what model is this thing? Let's just see here. This is a Samsung SyncMaster 906BW I want to be careful with that LCD panel because if we bust that, the show's over. No point in fixing it after that. So, I got to pull the power supply board because the power supply is alleged to be making a whistling noise and it most definitely does do that. So it's probably being overloaded by something. Here's the power supply board out of the beast and there are definitely two swollen capacitors down here. Fortunately, I have replacements better quality ones too. These are no-name capacitors. The ones I've got here are Nip and Chemicon capacitors. But there's something troubling about this because this, uh, this monolithic circuit here, this looks to be some sort of backlight inverter that would step up the low voltage from the line or even in a dedicated output off this thing's power supply and would step it up to the couple hundred or even couple thousand volts needed to illuminate the backlighting. And for some reason, this thing has been hot enough that it has discolored the circuit board. And it has also discolored this magnet wire in here, which is just thin varnished wire wrapped around some kind of a former. Since this looks to be a, a hybrid circuit with a whole bunch of things inside it and probably not easily replaced as a result, I can only hope that it hasn't burned itself out and gone bad. But I'll only know that after I try to replace these two capacitors. Well, there's definitely a dark spot there too, so I don't know why that thing has been so hot. But we've got to, in order to desolder those capacitors, we've got to take this little plastic shield off. I don't want to forget to put it back on because if we do, it'll short out against that panel and then it will probably destroy many power supply components in rapid succession. But this thing is actually held on by these little plastic things that go through the holes in the circuit board and you'd pinch them together and push them down and out. So now it's time to desolder some capacitors. Here's capacitor number one ready to be soldered into place, which I'll solder it into place using the roll of solder and the soldering iron. And then I'll cut these leads short with the side cutters. And then I'll put in the other capacitor, slip this thing back together, and see if that really is all that's wrong with it, or if I get to go downstairs and see how many 20 amp fuses we've got. But in its current state, it isn't blowing fuses, so I'm hopeful that it will come back to life. There we are, two brand new capacitors. Now to put this little plastic shield on the back, throw the monitor back together and see what happens. Now there could be other bad capacitors here, but usually bad capacitors are courteous enough to look distressed. The only other two I'm worrying about are these two right here, because they've been so near to that heat that's been produced. But we'll just have to see what happens. There is some evidence of repairs on this monitor going around the internet that suggests these two capacitors are the important ones and the ones that usually fail. So let's throw it back together here and see what we get. The board is now back in place. Now just to flip it in with the rest of the display, screw it all back together, put the stand on it, and try powering up. Look at that, manufactured in June of 2007. This monitor was given to me about a year ago. 2009, so it lasted about two years, which is pretty abysmal, especially for a big brand product like Samsung, but anybody can get bitten by bad caps, and they do seem to be a lot more common than they used to be. Okay, then, here we go. 
plug it into the wall over here and just see if when I hit the power button or if it was on the last time it worked the microcontroller and the monitor will probably remember that and keep it on. So let's just see what happens. Well, nothing went bang. We don't have any power either. So either we've got more bad caps or that encapsulated module itself is bad. Well, sometimes it definitely helps if the bozo who's making the repair video would remember to plug every last little connector in. I didn't plug the connector to the uh, video processing board in, so even if the monitor had wanted to come on, it couldn't possibly have done so. So let me put the stand on it. Try that again. All right, let's definitely try that again. Hopefully the result will be better. Hey, hey, power! And it's looking for an input. It lives! Woohoo! Pretty cool. Well, when I fix the motherboard, we'll just have to see if this thing will go ahead and display something. Pretty cool. Okay, now here's the computer. The monitor's all fixed. How about the computer? What we've got here is an A-Open motherboard. I don't... it's an MK73LE-N based on some kind of a VIA chipset and it's a socket 462 with some kind of uh, AMD Athlon on it. I think it's clocked around 1.2 gigahertz or somewhere. Anyway, amazingly enough, this thing works. But if you look down here, you'll see that three of these capacitors in the voltage regulation section for the processor, two of them have erupted from the top, and the third one back there has erupted from the bottom and spewed a little bit of garbage on the circuit board. But despite all that, this computer works. I was running it under uh, Linux for several hours with distributed net going, making the processor and its power supply work as hard as they ever possibly could, and it never gave up the ghost, but I'd rather it didn't. So I've got some capacitors for it. These are much higher co quality capacitors than what's on the board. These are actually Panasonic capacitors. The ones on the board are rated 85 degrees Celsius, and since they run in a hot area, which may be a byproduct of their not being wonderful, but they're no doubt catching some heat off that heat sink and fan, too. These are 105 degrees Celsius compa capacitors. So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to get the motherboard out here where I can work on it easily. Well, there's most of the internals of the computer removed and set aside. Turns out the processor is actually a Duron, but it doesn't matter. It's still perfectly useful for a lot of things. So now it's just time to get the motherboard out of there. And there are two things that would probably be a good idea to do if you plan to do this on your own. First of all, pull the clock battery so that nothing has any power going to it while the motherboard is out and being handled. Also, on a pre-assembled system like this, and for which a manual may or may not be available anymore, make a note of how all the connectors are hooked up, but most importantly the front panel ones, because we do want it to work again when we get done with it. With the motherboard out, it's time to work on it. And these three caps right there. All the others seem okay, so for right now I'm going to leave them alone, especially since the board works. These two haven't blown out too badly, but this one has actually pushed the plug right out of the bottom. But before you get started, you need to make sure that your soldering equipment is appropriate for the job that you have in mind. Motherboards are fragile, and some of them take solder much better than others do. Some of them don't take it very well at all. Some of them are very difficult to remove components from. You can, you can damage the board, lift a trace, do something like that, and then you'll really be in a world of hurt, which is just no good. So use a soldering iron that's just big enough to do the work. This is a 15 watt Radio Shack iron. And also, as an anti-static precaution, make sure that your soldering iron is grounded and that it's plugged into a properly grounded outlet like mine is right now. With that said, let's remove some capacitors. Look at that. Junk. Junk. This one's not so bad, but it's still going out because it's leaked paste out the top. And now to clean a little bit of that electrolyte off the motherboard, which should clean up with a careful, careful, careful application of water with some very gentle scrubbing just to clean those pads up. 
that that electrolyte doesn't cause any problems with the new capacitor. And it was kind of pain in the butt to get the capacitors off of these because the through holes that they're in are pretty darn tight. There's the board back in again. I've got to say I'm probably not too optimistic about its odds because frankly getting the, getting the old capacitors out wasn't bad. Putting the new ones in was a major bear. I just could not get them to take solder. Couldn't get the solder to go down into the solder holes, into the through holes. So I don't know. I fought with it quite a bit. I think I've got it, but it wouldn't surprise me if I may have done some damage to the board. But let's just see. You know, you never know. So let's turn it on here. Well, it peeped. Hey, look at that. Well, I guess it didn't go too badly after all. 512 megabytes of memory, okay. No keyboard. And, of course, the battery's been out, but... Maybe it's not as bad as I think it is. I guess I'll get a keyboard and I'll find out. Alright, one very grungy IBM Model M. This is what the public school do to computer equipment. But you replace that missing key, get some key caps, and this thing will probably work fine if you put it through the dishwasher, which is more than you can say for a lot of lesser keyboards. A fairly cheap and nasty Packard Bell mouse, our newly repaired display panel, and let's just see what we get here. Hey, I even got the LEDs hooked up right on the first try. That rarely happens. A beep, memory count, Let's just see if it boots up here. I don't remember what distribution I was running on this thing. Hmm, detecting IDE drives is taking a while. Oh, well, we've got the uh, we got the boot drive, but we don't have the CD drive. Oh well, I'm going to system setup here and just set things up, and then I'll try booting it up. Ah, eh, keyboard's got a few small issues. Probably a bunch of grunge in its matrix because. That's the plus key I'm hitting. That shouldn't be turning scroll lock on and off. Oh well. It's working well enough. Although somehow we ended up in 2011. Oops. This will be the toughest test for it. Will it actually boot an operating system? Hmm. Here it comes. Just took a little bit of thinking about it, but it's not, uh, not really getting the uh, auto adjustment quite correct, but there we go. That's better. But yeah, it looks like this system has made a complete recovery, so pretty cool. Got a decent little workstation here. Good enough to surf the internet, do useless stuff on YouTube, stuff like that, so... I'm not complaining, and there you have it. Replacing the capacitors in a display, replacing some capacitors on a motherboard, even if it was a bit of a struggle, and definitely coming out ahead. Now, while the display wasn't bad, and the circuit board took solder pretty easily, and I think you could do that with just a little bit of practice, if you're going to work on a motherboard, practice on some junk ones first, because it really is very tricky to get it right on some of them. Some of them take solder just beautifully. And others, like this A open board, really don't. But there you have it. Two freshly repaired components.